Lorne Naporka with Tomás McCarthy on WLR. Well, I was at the Abbey side, side of Dungarvan, and at that time, Dun- Abbey side was a very close knit community. It was a seafaring village at the eastern side of the Colligan River in Dungarvan. So all belonged to me, were, and my father's side had gone to sea in sailing ships and later then in steamships. Well, you see, Abbey side, as I said, I was living across the road from the sea. So we were always out in boats. Even if the oars weren't in the boats, we had hurlies to use. <laughs> <laughs> we'd go down the strand and the tide would be out, so we'd spend the day out poking the ball, coming back in. Yes. So for me, the hurling was, was all tied up at Abbey's side. And I hadn't any great ambitions looking much further afield at all. Yes. I was fulfilled playing for the village. But in the boys' school then, we met up Michael Foley. He was unique because he brought us across the road and taught us how to play hurling in the pond. The sea was at two sides yes. of the sea wall there. You could always look around and see the biggest fella on the other side, he was surely going to be full forward and I was full back. <laughs> so this fella was, I was tangled up in him for about 10 minutes and I didn't know how to handle him. So at one stage then, the goalie asked me to, Michael Keane actually was the goalkeeper, he asked me to poke it out and I went down to pick the ball the umpire beside the goal whispered at me, keep away from that fellow, he can't hurl, only arrive when he arrives, when, when the ball comes. So the next ball was dropping in about, 20, about 15 yards from me and I, I pretended to go and he ran and he was now dealing with a ball coming off of the air. <laughs> so as it happened, I arrived at the right time and locked it down and I got a great poke up the field. Strangely enough, that the man who did that, I, I met him afterwards, and he had a big influence in hurling in Warford and my hurling in particular, because it turned out he was Pat Fanning. What, what surprised me when I look back now is Warford had won the all in 48, but then a few years afterwards, there was no collective training at that time. Mm. And I wasn't keen, and I didn't think I was ready for that at all, and I told chairman of our club, Michael Fies, I told him, look, Michael, get my name off of that. I'm not in that league at this stage yet, anyway. So I thought that was done. So I went to the pictures on a Saturday night, and I was coming home. Michael Fies and Sean Eno O'Brien, who was captain of the team at one day, yes. Tuna, he was waiting for me, and they were saying, you'll have to go tomorrow. And I was saying, look, I don't want to go, Michael. I thought I told you that. So it ended up, anyway... The bottom line was Shawnee said, well, look, you can't leave the village down tomorrow. You'll have to go. Yeah. So that was the bottom line. Pat Fanning had become chairman of the county board. So he was determined to put his stamp on things in the inter-county scene. So we were called to a field in Frontal Field in Dungarvan then, uh, a group, to do this collective training. And Pat Fanning then made a speech. And I knew that the line was drawn for me because up to then I was, um, I was happy and I'd be saying I had a sailing boat that we had built in between and everything was grand but Pat Fanning made this rousing speech where he spelled it out that he felt as God was his judge that he believed that that group had the winnings of an all and for Warford and that he as chairman of the county board would do everything in his power to facilitate that but in return, the players would have to give everything they had onto the horse, and then you dig down, you get that little bit extra for the for the Waterford jersey. And your heart must be strong, though my love for you won't wane. I am praying for the time. The 
but, um, but they were fantastic times. Wonderful montage on the late great Austin Flynn put together by our own Michael Byrne. WLR Big Match commentator Kieran O'Connor, how will you remember Austin Flynn? Well, an unbelievable character, uh, an inspiration to young people. But I think during his playing days, it's hard to believe he came on the team in 52, still there 15 years later in 67. But what I loved about Austin, he never looked back. He was looking forward, encouraging people going forward. I saw him towards the end, literally, of his career. The first year I went to championship matches with, with my late dad and my brother Michael in 63, and he was such a huge presence on the team. I always looked at him as a huge giant himself and Chase. I always reckon were just those superheroes of, of the actual team. But he was the real gentle giant, a fantastic hurler, did it all on the playing field. But off the field, what a gentleman, lovely to talk to. His love of, of the boats, which was in that lovely montage by Michael Byrne, but also his love of hurling. And in, in particular of Abbey Side, he was a proud Abbey Side man and a proud Warford man. And his respect for the late great Pat Fanning and indeed John Keane. And a lot of the country boys, even though they weren't involved with the Mount Sign um, group, they were really inspired by the level that they brought to it. And particularly Pat Fanning as the um, manager and John Keane as coach. But a real gentleman, a lovely person on and off the field and out in the hospital in Dungarvan or when he worked with the health board out there. Anyone could approach him, and uh, as I say, I was always in awe of him by his size. And as I got to know him in later life, and Tomas, I think you were there. My last big fond memory of a night with Aston was the pre All Ireland 2017 with a night over in the local for Club Dacia. And I interviewed him that night, and his recollection of stories and of incidents in the game, the ball dropping in, and Tom Cunningham came out, and Joe Harney went in, and Christy Ring went out. It was just beautiful to listen to. I could listen to him all day, but he'd be sorely missed. Can you tell us about that passion for sailing, Kieran? Yeah, I suppose Abbey Side at the time, and I'm a blow into Abbey Side. I'm a Capra Quinn man on the banks of the Blackwater <laughs> when the rowing club, and the, as the Blackwater was the Capra Quinn, the sea down there, but by the pond. And uh, Nin Organ, of course, who'd be an uncle of, of Sean Organ's, and a lot of the local families spent their time at the boats, fixing boats. There was much time fixing boats, getting them ready to go out, then going out. But Austin really loved it, and all his family had been involved in it. And he was at peace, I suppose, out both in the boats and in sailing and that. So there was a huge interest in boats in Abbeyside back in the 40s and 50s in particular, and before that, a lot of people got involved in the whole seafaring escapades as well as a lot of Austin's ancestors. But um, thankfully, Pat Fanny <laughs> cajoled him to get playing hurling because what a presence he had for club and indeed particularly for the county. And I believe he was never really one to boast about his achievements, Kieran. but we can kind of sing his praises here now. Can you give us a little bit of a, a rundown of, of what he won in his career? Well, I, I suppose really uh, he was part of that great team and I've said to several people, when I speak to people outside of Waterford, that 57-63 team, although when he won all Ireland, a bit like the team we had in the noughties, their impact in the game of hurling was just unbelievable. But he, he won his Munster medals in 57, 59 and 63. Won the All-Ireland, of course, in the 59. Two All-Ireland runner-up medals, the 57 game, which everyone involved in that team, Pat Fanny included when I spoke to him on it, that's the one that got away. That's the one that hurt most. And the people felt the team were at their crescendo in 57. But also, of course, he, he won Oireachtas medals, selected on the team of the century. And he was very honoured with that. And indeed, I was so honoured that my own brother Michael was picked half-back. But Austin was the fullback on that team. He won the Ku Cullen Awards, which was similar to the All Star Awards in the early 60s, but ever present on the Munster team. Now, the Munster team, Tomas, getting on the Munster team was your All Star. And in the 60s, he was ever present and won a couple of Railway Cup medals as well. But uh, highly regarded. And I always remember um, the late John Doyle was reared. A lot of people don't realise John Doyle, the great, the man who won eight All Ireland's with Tipperary, he was reared in Dungarvan. His mother died as a young baby. Uh, and when, when John was a young child and he was sent down to Dungarvan to his auntie and he was reared in Dungarvan. So before he died, Jerry Chalk rang to say he'd love to come down. So we organised Father Brendan Crowley, a great friend of Warford Hurley, even though based up, up in Clanmel, organised the day over in Alice O'Connor, Johnny O'Connor. The great Johnny was alive at the time. So John Doyle came down, visited his old alma mater, but Austin was core in this and over in the house over in O'Connor's pub when he, when John Doyle walked in he was expecting to see Johnny O'Connor but Frankie Walsh was there Austin Flynn was there Michael my brother was there Tom Cunningham was there 
and it was just an unbelievable evening there. And the funny thing about it, most of them were pioneers because John Doyle was after drink at the time. Well, there was pots of tea going for <laughs> for a few hours there. <laughs> and I remember my sister-in-law, Mary O'Connor, Mary rang, what's keeping Mike? Because Mike would be a non-drinker, wouldn't be a pub man as such. <laughs> He's younger brother made up from it on, on that scale. <laughs> but um, the, the, the enjoyment they got that day, but the respect John Doyle had for him and all, all the inter-county men, up in Kilkenny, you, you talked to Eddie Kerr about Austin Flynn, the great Christy Ring spoke about him, the Vanny Rackard. Like, he was, he was a peerless fullback and um, a very good hurler, but my God, did he mind, did he, did he protect that goal, Tomás? Absolutely. And another man who had great respect for him and someone I want to bring in, uh, Kieran is, is Justin McCarthy, of course, former Waterford manager, former Cork hurler as well, played with and against uh, Austin Flynn. And uh, I had the pleasure of speaking to him yesterday and uh, hear his memories of the Abbey Sideman. Well, first of all, I'd like to pay my sympathy and condolences to his family, um, you know, uh, because he, ah, he, was a, he was a great, uh, he was a great girl, he was a great hurler. Uh, Standing player around the square, I can tell you, um, could could uh, could hold his own against the best of players. I mean, like the tip teams down go and the, the cock teams as well. Uh, I, I remember watching him in in, in, in was it fifty nine in the Munster final. I, my first Munster final below. I think I think it was going to be Torres and Limerick. I'm not sure, but and then. Um, Cock played uh, Warford in '65. He was in that team that I was playing, and then we I had the honour of playing with him in the Munster team in 1967. We we, we played Connacht in Limerick, and I was I was midfield, and he was full back. Um, ah, he was a very he was a very demanding player, sturdy player. Um, when Anson sat around the square that time, and he would have to be able to, you know, play, play a part. Um, but he was a very fair player, too. He, you know, he, he was, uh, there was never a dirty stroke to him or anything. But he, you had to be tough, and, you know, the backs that time were tough, and the, the rules were slightly different, and, you know, he was he was well able to, to match any forward that came his way. Um, and he played, I remember he played against Cork in, in 67 in the Munster semi final, I'd say, that day that Warford beat Cork below in, in Welsh Park. He was playing that day as well. Um, and a very <clears throat> nice, humble man as well. I, I, I came across a few times below in Dungarvan, and I often saw him walking out the road and I'd be going down training, and I'd keep the car and he would give you another wave and so on. There would be traffic behind you, so you couldn't stop us. Um, ah, he was one of, one of the you know legendary Warford players of his era, and Certainly, uh, and 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 it was very complimentary to the team that, that I was with in the north. He was he, he was always glad to see Walford doing well and uh, you know and, and being successful. And he was never you know any bitterness. I think we like to say we were better. They were better. Who was better? You know. So uh, a very 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 nice man. But you know, standing no standing back man and you know um, played a huge part in, in Walford's uh, uh, story back in the in the in the fifties and early sixties. Yeah, well, what qualities stood out for you, Justin, that made him such a, a highly regarded well, fullback at that time? You to play in the fullback lane, there's no doubt about that. You, you have to, you'd have to be able to stand up the tough exchanges, ball coming in, pushing and shoving, and fellas could hold off players and so on. And you have to be able to hurl as well because you just can't be a, a molecule in there. And Austin could hurl as well and, and get the ball out the field, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and he was well able to hurl as well. So he was he was commanding and not a huge man, but a very sturdy man, uh, and uh, you know somebody like you could very dependable. You'd never you'd never see fellas getting a lot of scores off him, you know, and and could hold his own with any 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 company in either or any counties. Kieran, is that a fair description of of Austin as a hurler? Yeah, I think brilliantly summed up by Justin and he rang me the other day to pass on the condolences to Janice and Anita and what a tough week for them but uh, summed them up brilliantly there because a great man in his playing days but what I loved about him he was always looking forward encouraging and during that great team we had in Justin's era he was always full of support for the guys and he'd meet them personally and he'd, he was a great man to drop a note to person he'd, he'd a lovely way of dropping a note and a little Christmas card and uh, support but his proudest moment, I suppose, was when uh, in 2013, when Cormac was on the team, uh, came onto the team. Would you believe Cormac was with him up in the stand in 02, a little young boy in Porky Keeve? And uh, he was so proud to be with him after the long breakthrough. And then when Cormac got on the team in 2013, my God, he was he was delighted. And then Gus comes along with, with Belly Gunner. So he was so 
thrilled and I'm thrilled that he actually saw the lads in action and uh, that 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 really gave him a great lift. But I think Justin summed him up brilliantly. A gentle giant, really. Uh, uh, playing full back that time, Tom, it was known as Hell's Kitchen and that famous photograph of Ned Power coming out and Christy Ring going to take the head off Tom Cunningham, you know, and it summed it all up. And Austin, just his hands out wide and holding back, protecting the Ned Power there. That was the game that time, big difference. But he loved the modern game and agreed to acknowledge the modern game rather than saying this, that and the other. He said, my God, the pace of it now, we wouldn't live with it, the skill, the speed. So... Um, he was really generous uh, as regards praise and loved to encourage and loved looking forward. Yeah, and you mentioned his, his grandson Gus, Dear Kieran, and he, he paid such a heartfelt tribute to Austin at his funeral mass yesterday. And I just want to play a, a little short snippet of it here. I came to the realisation yesterday that there will be dozens of people fully qualified to do this job because everyone seems to have a nice story or a nice word about Austin Flynn. On the flip side, he would never have a bad word to say about anyone. He always saw the good in people. I've received so many texts over the past few days reiterating what I already knew, how much of a gentleman he was. He was such a kind and generous man, he really did touch the lives of so many. To many, he would have been Waterford's dependable fullback, but to his family and his friends, he was there, Mr. Dependable. He was there, fullback. Yeah, amazing stuff, uh, Kieran. That, that, that really sums it all up, really, doesn't it? Brilliant, and I think the uh, fair play to Gus because it's a difficult thing to do. And I thought Father Michael Henry, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm sorry, <coughs> really gelled in well and, and got Austin and won. And it was great that uh, his grandson was able to say a few words. And Father Michael, who's a lifelong friend, and of course the Enright family, Dom was part of 57, Padner and Doc, part of the teams that suffered county final defeats, but he so, sh- soldiered with him. But uh, I thought the whole ceremony, but I think Gus in particular, summed his granddad up brilliantly, which was difficult to do. So well done to Gus, uh, granddad to be proud. You. Yeah, yeah, absolutely well said, Kieran. And I believe some of the the fifty nine survivors came out in, in force to pay tribute to, to Austin yesterday. Well, they did. You know what I mean. And uh, Martin Og and uh, Larry Guinan were, were uh, dropped up, and of course um, Tom Cunningham ca- ca- came ca- came to meet the family, and my own brother Michael was there. But uh, I remember when Tom chased his daughter died, and. Uh, the huge crowd of the 59 team and Frankie, the captain, was or- orchestrating those three or four pews, but uh, there's only one pew now left to, for the 59 survivors, so an emotional day for them. WLR Big Match commentator Kieran O'Connor, thanks so much for sharing your memories of the Lake Great Austin Plain. Privilege to us, thanks. The friends that you'd make playing for Waterford it still applies today, and you don't realise at the time, just afterwards you realise the friendship and what, what the hurling meant. The old medals are stuck in a drawer somewhere or stuck in a wall you know And um, but the real gold of the friends you meet along the way you know The story of Waterford's second All-Ireland title in 1959 is an interesting one as it came at the end of a number of barren years in the early part of the decade the county had celebrated their maiden senior All-Ireland win in 1948 on a day when the Dacia's minor side had also lifted the All-Ireland crown. Despite this unique double, senior success had eluded Waterford in the early 1950s. They failed to reach the Munster final for a number of years and they watched Tipperary and Cork not only achieve provincial glory, but both counties would each win three All-Irelands in a row in the first half of the decade. However, Waterford's return to the top table was starting to take a turn for the better. Full back of the 1959 side, Austin Flynn takes up the story. In 1957 then what really started was Pat Fanning had become chairman of the county board and he called a group together over to Fraher Field and I was one of the group and I saw Seamus Power and Philly Grimes. I did were heroes but I didn't think I was in their league. So Pat Fanning made a famous speech and which embedded in my brain and everybody else that was there that night saying as God was he judge believed that there was a winning of an all Ireland in this group of players and he was pledging as chairman of the county board that everything possible would be done by the county board to facilitate that but in return you would be expected to give everything for the worth of a jersey and you had to give until it hurt and you dug down and you got that bit of extra so I was looking over at Seamus Barton for the grounds and I was saying great God hey I'm in the same boat as these fellas and I knew this was serious stuff and I had built a sailing boat 
and I knew the sailing was gone out the wind and then that very night I can pinpoint that thing. So that was the start of it, you see. It was a, co- a total a commitment by the chairman and the county board and his great friend John Keane, like, who was the, is considered the greatest total of awards would ever be choose. He was the, there as the trainer. Lorna Porca with Tomas McCarthy on WLR 103.9.